everybody. I'm so honored to be part of this amazing and exciting conference. I'm an anesthesiologist, and one of my yes. passions is education. And in anesthesiology, a bit similar to aviation, it's said that our work Only. is okay. hours and hours of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. So I focused a lot of my career on simulation so that learners have an opportunity to reflect more and engage more in this artificial imitation environment before going out and experiencing the terror for real. So this quote is one of my favorite quotes about, about learning. And in medical education, I think we hope that largely the, the learning comes from the first two, from reflection and from imitation or simulation. But sometimes things go way off script and experience happens. Last year, I took care of a patient who experienced a devastating complication as a result of a procedure that was needed in order for this patient to undergo emergency surgery. And this patient died not long after surgery. The next day, I went to go meet with the family. And I was racking my brains thinking of what to say. What had I learned in medical school, in residency? Well, I'd learned that sticking to facts was good, but this was not going to be an exchange of factual information. I'd learned also that saying I'm sorry was good. You may have heard of that. But even this just didn't feel right. It felt just ever so distancing. I'm here, and you're over there, and I'm sorry that you're not okay. So I myself was not okay. And I actually had no idea what to say. So when we met, I broke down as the family sat around me. And there was a long silence. And in that silence, something amazing happened. We were there just with our pain. And what happened was there was no world beyond this room. There was no time before or after now. And as so we each sat there individually and together with our pain, a shared compassion emerged. And we eventually did talk, but it was that silence that created the connection between us. At the end of the meeting, several of the family members shook my hand, and one of them even found it in himself to hug me. So we all learn to wear facades, not only in healthcare, but in life in general. But in that moment, I have never been more nakedly human. And there's nothing in my training that could ever have prepared me for this. And it has become the most transformative experience of my entire professional life. So, compassion. The Latin translation or the etymology of this word means to suffer with. And I think, overall, I see too little compassion in healthcare. And for me, compassion is really a, a different thing than empathy, which is often talked about. We teach students about how to show compassion, as I was. But sitting there with the family that day, I wasn't a doctor delivering bad news, going through my scripts. I was just me, I was just my feelings. So since then, I see something that I was completely blind to before. I can see those of my colleagues who have suffered a similar devastating experience. I can see their spirits, it's in the eyes. And all of us who have been through it silently recognize each other and acknowledge each other. But by and large, it's a secret society. And there's a code of silence. There's really no place for open and public uh, discussion. And no place for open fellowship. Well, we have very little data on the impact of these kind of unexpected catastrophes on provider, providers. But we do know that it appears to be shockingly common. 
In one survey of anesthesiologists, over 80% reported having experienced an unexpected, devastating catastrophe like this one. And even more sobering is the fact that many take a year or more or never fully recover emotionally. And more than 10% consider leaving the specialty as a result. There are even less data in the medical literature on the impact of patients and their families. And the most shocking of all is that patients and families and their providers are almost always kept isolated from each other in two separate camps, perhaps never to speak again after the event. From time to time, there are stories published about doctors whose patients have died. But often I see in these stories a need to be seen as noble or unique. You know, uh, no one can know what I've been through. But suffering can be an isolating experience, or it can be an experience of connection. In healthcare, what we really need is to be able to teach each other to have the courage to go off script, to experience the bitterness, and to dare to suffer with. This patient is now part of my life story, and I'm so glad to have been able to share it with you. Thank you. <laughs>